space is not empty. The celestial bodies fill it with magnetic fields, sometimes intensely strong, and winds which can be very powerful. During the 1950s, one young scientist began to describe how all this works. His name is Eugene Parker, and for his discoveries, he's awarded the Crawford Prize for 2020 in astronomy of six million Swedish crowns. The citation reads, for pioneering and fundamental studies of the solar wind and magnetic fields from stellar to galactic scales. Eugene Parker was born in 1927 in the northern part of the United States in the small mining town of Horton, Michigan. Already as a child, Eugene is drawn to heat and science. He's fascinated by steam locomotives and internal combustion engines. And eventually, he begins studying the world through a microscope. The rotifers are his favorites. In the late 1940s, Eugene Parker leaves the North to work on his PhD. After a two-day bus trip, he finally arrives in Los Angeles, California. Here he is, sitting at his desk at Caltech, where he begins to take an interest in magnetism and particles in space. His breakthrough comes while studying tails of comets. Each comet has two tails, one which is of dust and the other of charged gases. And no matter how the comet travels, the gas tail always points away from the sun, as if something is blowing on it. But what? With a new way of calculating the sun's surface as liquid gas within magnetic fields called magnetohydrodynamics, Parker can now show how the sun constantly emits charged particles and they move in an unexpected way, slowly at first, at the sun's surface, but then accelerating to incredible speeds. Parker calls this the solar wind, and because it is charged, it can blow on the charged gas tail of comets. This is a grand idea, but when Parker first presents it, very few believe him. First, when Parker presents the idea, he becomes very criticized. No one believes him because uh, they were believing that uh, uh, the solar atmosphere was more or less static and was no mass loss. But all that changes when the Mariner 2 spacecraft measures the solar wind out in space a few years later. This, of course, changed the whole view of the solar system. And then everyone started to think that, OK, uh, he is right. The solar wind is emitted from the sun all the time. And because of uh, its plasma, its uh, charged particles, it interacts with the environments of planets, with planets' atmospheres, with all objects that are in the solar systems, like asteroids, uh, comets, small moons, and so on. The bulk of the and for researchers like these at the Swedish Institute of Space Physics in Uppsala, who are investigating space, the solar wind is an important reality to pay attention to. For us, who is building the spacecraft and using the data from that, uh, it is important to think about the effect of the solar wind all the time. Because the solar wind has the power to knock out electronics. So sometimes there are violent events from the sun. And these are very dangerous for human technology. So they lead to disturbance on satellites and also they can lead to large power outages on Earth. One such example was uh, the Halloween storms that occurred in the autumn of 2003. Thanks to Eugene Parker, we can now make better forecasts as to when the solar storms can strike. And anyone who's seen the northern lights has also witnessed a more pleasant effect of the solar wind, because this is when charged particles reach the Earth's magnetic field and make the sky dance. The solar wind spreads out in what is called the Parker spiral, where the sun's magnetic field gives form to the wind. 
But the Earth also has a magnetic field. We knew this from before, but Parker describes how this changes over time. And the same calculation applies to basically all the stars and many planets' magnetic fields, which are expanding and constantly changing. It's of enormous importance what Eugene Parker have done. And he has given the fundamentals uh, for solar wind physics. But also he, he gives, uh, he's kind of the father of heliospheric physics, the, the kind of boundary that encompasses the whole solar system. In the 70s, in yet another groundbreaking work, Eugene Parker describes the outermost border of the solar wind. And this is extremely far out. First, at the termination shock, the wind slows down. Then proceeding more slowly in the heliosphere, which is the sun's own trail in space. And since Parker's discovery is fundamental physics, it means that most stars have heliospheres and that our entire galaxy should also leave a trail, like all other galaxies. Once it was thought that space was more or less empty. Now we know that it is full of winds and magnetic fields, described by Parker. And in 2017, Eugene Parker became the first living person to get a space probe named after him. The Parker Solar Probe, which for seven years will examine the sun more closely than any other probe Six, has done before. Five, three, two, yeah! of the mighty Delta IV heavy rocket with NASA's Parker Solar Probe, a daring mission to shed light on the mysteries of our closest star. Well, I sort of takes my breath away. I didn't do anything for a few minutes. Of course, no luck Crawford Prize, so I was surprised, pleasantly so. Stop on, here we come. The Crawford Prize is awarded in partnership between the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and the Crawford Foundation in Lund. The Academy is responsible for selecting the Crawford laureates. 